<coughs> Hello friends, Brother Rob with you again. So here in my apartment filming another self-defense uh, training video. Okay, so I wanted to go over a few um, self-defense techniques, um, both from what I've learned in dojos, both what I've learned online. Just kind of put it together in one practical video. So the first one I wanted to demonstrate is a couple of Krav Maga moves. Um, Krav Maga is a the uh, Israeli defense system, military combat system. Um, so the one is so if someone goes to uh, take a strike at you, upper block, and make a C with your right hand, and what you're going to do is you're going to push down on the left bicep of your opponent, and that's and that's going to, and then you're going to quickly go around, and just boom, drop the elbow on the back of the neck, right? So, so again, it's block, right, and then circle around, and then drop your elbow on the back of the center of the neck, and put up definitely in the fight, right there and then. <clears throat> Another good Krav Maga move, again, upper middle, so you go to strike you, upper block, and then just <clears throat> palm strike, boom, to right to the underside of the chin, right? So again, they're going to strike you up, upper block, and palm strike. Again, that'll not, definitely knock them out as well. Now, <clears throat> the thing I want to demonstrate in this video is a few ways to get out of holds. Um, so, so you say three ways. So the first, say someone has you in a bear hug from behind. Um, <clears throat> so, and your uh, have it, has your arms pinned to your side. So what you're going to do in this case is simply first what you want to do is bend, drop your knees a bit so you can make them camera angle down so you can see what I'm talking about here. So someone's got you in a bear hug from behind like that, simply bend your knees a bit, and then the second thing you want to do is elbow to their stomach, just elbow period, and that'll kind of <clears throat> throw them off a bit. And then what you want to do from there is, uh, yeah, so I'm going to start from the top. So if they have you in a bear hug, first thing is elbow, foot stomp, and then I'll let go because too much pain, turn around, one shot to the solar plexus, not the window. That's one way to get a hold. Second one again, bend the knees, and then kind of hug yourself like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to throw them around in front of you over your shoulder. So they have you bear hugs, so they're wrapped around you. So all you're, all you're going to do is simply bend your knees, kind of hug, your, hug yourself, and then throw them around. Because they have your their hands, their arms around you, <clears throat> and if you just kind of lock yourself in place as if your feet are on cement and thrust them around your hips, they'll be forced to land about right here, 45 degrees, roughly in front of you. <clears throat> Another way to get out of it um, is simple. Okay, again, so it's if they have you in a bear hug. What you're gonna do this time, chin down, one arm over their hand, and simply take the back, put your hand behind their neck if you can feel for it, and simply again and have them thrown in front of you. So that's a few ways to get a uh, hold. Now, I don't recommend doing this, but if you have to, you have to. <laughs> so I'm going to show you five ways to break someone's bones. Okay, first, one of the simplest ways to, to break someone's nose is simply palm strike to the bridge of the nose. That's one way. So second, if someone strike, absorb it with your, uh, the hit with your hand like this. Turn their hand open so their palm, when you pry it, is facing up. And they gotta do is snap their 
fingers down and to break their fingers. It's two. Easy way to break someone's arm. Someone will strike you. You can take it out like this or, or hold it behind. And all you'd have to do is either, if someone's if you have someone's arm stretched out either in front or behind, all you would have to do is wherever the elbow is, just come smashing from up or down, right? So if I have someone's arm like this, all it would take is one either open palm, yeah, open, open palm just boom from either side. So that's three ways. Another way, <coughs> um, break someone's uh, kneecap. If you hold them like this and smash the kneecap, or someone tries to do a loke. Here, have the camera down. Someone does a low kick. All you gotta do is hold their ankle and simply twist. So if someone does a low kick, grab their foot and twist. And that's five ways. <coughs> um, a few judo throws for you. So again, what you want to do when someone goes to strike, pivot to the side, one end on top of the wrist, one end on the bicep, and simply throw. Over and your hip. Second one is similar but extends the move a little longer. Where again, one hand on top of the wrist, one hand on the end of the arm. And this time you're going to go 180 and then around the hip. That's two. Shoulder to shoulder, release your grip. They're going to come forward because they're not expecting you to release their grip. One hand on top of the back, one hand under the legs, and flip them on their back. Three. Fourth, um, you can, right, um, for the fourth one, right, yeah, so again, this time you're going to step in like this and simply lower your knees and throw them over your shoulder like a second two. For, <laughs> for the fifth one, well, it's this kind of combination. It's not a throw, but it will definitely send them flying. It's a combination between a judo and a keto move, where you just we're back here with time, almost eight minutes. Okay, so so this time, again, you go one eighty, release your grip, come around, boom, close the line down. All right, now five keto knockout moves. One, so block, come in, open palm, boom, right to the side of their uh, side of the neck, right? So that's what you want to do. Open, step in, take the palm, comes up 45, boom, hits the neck. You hit as you're going through. So it's one. Aikido Naki move, second, and then again, palm, boom, underside of the chin, done, done, lights it. Um, another block, step in, close line, three, and then another one, block, step in, elbow to the side of the temple, four, five, Block, step in, hands behind the neck, boom. Smash their face into your knee, and that'll guarantee to knock them out. So that's five Aikido. So we've done two Krav Maga moves, five or four Judo throws with a combination of Aikido and Judo, and then five knockout moves, and five ways to break people's bones. So now let's go into uh, some kickboxing and uh, karate techniques. Um, so one kickboxing technique is fake, fake, snap kick. So we, what I mean by that is you're going to do, so for me, here, 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 angle the camera down again. So 
So for me, I'm, I'm left foot dominant, so it'd go one, so it's one, one, boom, stop kick, right? So one, one, and you always, yeah, always try to keep your face protected. One, one, two. Now, problem with that is for the karate practitioner, as soon as I see someone going to foot, if I'm a karate guy, all I'm going to do is I'm going to step in and close the gap. Because the kickboxer or the taekwondo guy is going to want to use their legs to take you in. <clears throat> but if I just step, close the gap, now the best I'm going to, the worst that's going to happen is a knee might come up. And if a knee comes up, palm strike, right? <clears throat> knee comes up, palm strike. Or just hold like that and for the karate practitioner, just one elbow, turn, one shot the solar plex, front kick. Front kicks are very powerful. <laughs> but, and front kick will probably land the fight. And uh, kick, another kickboxing technique I learned this week was jab, cross, hook, and then roundhouse front kick. Now, I'm going to take the roundhouse out of it because I don't think it's necessary. That's not effective, but I don't think it's necessary. Probably, if you're landing the jab, cross, hook, that'll probably be enough. But, if it doesn't, <laughs> jab, cross, hook, front kick. It's enough. But the front kick, again, remember, it's just, all you're doing is drag the knee up, and extend the foot. Remember, get your knee up before you kick, though. <laughs> Otherwise, it's powerful. And it's powerless and ineffective. So, again, for the front kick, all you want to do is get the knee up and extend the foot. <laughs> get the knee up, extend the foot. <laughs> and then kind of visualize where you want to hit, right? So, if I want to aim straight, so in my mind, I can see where I want to hit it. So have a target in place in your mind before you get the foot up. That way, when it comes up, so if I'm aiming at the camera, so if I'm visualizing where the camera is, so by the time my foot is going to come there, see? Because in my mind's eye, I visualize, okay, that's where I want, that's the, my that's my target. So, I'm, <clears throat> that's where it's going to hit. So, same thing with striking. So, visualize where you want your strikes to finish in your mind's eye before it arrives. <laughs> it's kind of like um, pinning a target in your mind. So that when you execute it, it's there. Right? Same thing with kicks, kick strikes, anything. Try to visualize it. Have a target in your mind so that when you go to execute, it's easy for you to do because that's where your, your focus is, right? Now, the other thing is don't get too focused on one thing. Now, we try to mix up your combinations and your techniques, especially if you're in a street fight or in a tournament. Because you don't want to be per too predictable, right? You want to not you you don't want your opponent to know what you're going to do before you're going to do it. You want them to be caught off guard, unexpected. Like you don't want them to expect what you're going to do. <sighs> okay, so so you can mix it up, right? So you can even start with the front kick. So you actually better. Even one of the things too is like. When you strike, most people expect the strike to fall through. But one of the things that usually almost always catches people off guard, if you go strike, stop halfway, they'll commit to the block because, again, they expect you to fall through. So if you go halfway, they'll commit to the block, and then follow through, you'll probably actually have more success with that technique than actually straight through. And again, remember, most people expect you to follow through with the punch. If you go halfway, they commit to the block, and then extend. 
works almost all the time, <clears throat> even against highly trained people, because it messes with their head. <clears throat> all right. Another thing that <clears throat> can be really um, effective is uh, pressure points. Now, pressure po the body has several pressure points, but focus on the most the most common ones: throat, neck. Uh, here, kidney shots. So, I mean, even with one finger, you can apply a, a monumental amount of pressure under the, the throat, the neck, um, even in, inside the shoulder or the wrist, elbow, back of the knee, um, inside of the thighs, or back of the calves. Um, <clears throat> one of the karate techniques that I learned that I actually think is highly effective is to say if someone, this is like in a most likely in a, a bar, bar scene scenario, say someone charges you and tries to like ram you over, so they want to just uh, like ram you. Um, like this, all you gotta do when they get close enough, have your hands like a C. So one is gonna shot to their collar, one's gonna shot to the bicep. So it's like this, and then you're gonna just move to the side. This hand goes up, this hand pushes the bicep down, which is which will have the head thrust forward, and then it's gonna what you're gonna do is launch them forward. Very effective. Alright, I guess enough for now. Peace out.